What's up guys, Steve Craig Retro Games back with another video and tonight we are going to be discussing scary games on the Nintendo Switch in honor of Halloween. So I will be showing you guys a large portion of my survival horror, scary, spooky games and then I also have a stack of uh, Halloween style games that are a little less spooky. Um, so uh, if you guys aren't too scared, let's check them out. Alright guys, so in no specific order, and I am going to kind of run through these quick because I've got quite a few. We're going to start off with a big box, and that is Streets of Red, Devil's, Devil's Dare Deluxe. And this is a side-scrolling beat-em-up that is horror-themed with a bunch of 80s horror characters. It is uh, very gruesome. Super, super fun game. Uh, so if you want to get your beat em up on in a Halloween style manner, check out Streets of Red. Another big box, and that is Ib. There are a few different uh, versions of the special edition. And Ib is basically um like this cartoony but creepy uh game that takes place in a museum if i remember correctly and um it does have a pixelated uh graphic style but don't let that fool you uh this game does have a very creepy vibe to it um so check out ib Now, before I get into what I would call the more adult-themed games, I do have a stack that I guess could be considered a little bit more family-friendly, some more than others. We will start off with Spooky Spirit Shooting Gallery. Uh, this is a new release by Axis, and this is basically like carnival game shooting games, and they are more, you know... Uh, fun, friendly, spooky spirit uh, enemies that you are shooting. And then we have Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. I, I do have the Castlevania games. I'm not going to show those as everybody knows Castlevania. But if you want a game that is like Castlevania, Bloodstained is a very, very good game. And there is Curse of the Moon and Ritual of the Night. Uh, I believe this is the sequel. But go with either one of them. Um, as if you have played Castlevania and you want something a little different. But kind of the same. But newer. Check out the Bloodstained games. Next up is Little Nightmares 2. I do not have the first one for the Switch. I've got the first one for Xbox. Um, but either Little Nightmares or Little Nightmares 2. Now, these games do have some um, parts in each game that do definitely have some really creepy elements. However, I would say that somebody that's not really akin to playing scary games can definitely get through Little Nightmares. Ghostbusters the video game remastered. This is definitely a family friendly one. Um, if you guys are fans of the Ghostbusters movies, especially one and two, consider this part three and that would be the original Ghostbusters trilogy. Uh, this was written by Ivan Reitman and um, let's see, the game features the voices of Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis and Ernie Hudson. It's written by Harold Ramis, I believe. All new story penned by the writers of the original films, Dan Aykroyd and Harold Ramis, yes. So this game is absolutely fantastic. The voice acting is fantastic. The gameplay is super, super fun. This is Ghostbusters Part 3. Check it out. Next up, we've got House of the Dead Remake Limited Dead Edition. This is a shooting game. Super fun game. It is a little graphic, but uh, this is a game that you could definitely play with the older kids. 
Uh, maybe the younger kids if you're the cool, cool parents. Uh, but I'll leave that up to you. But uh, super fun game. Definitely fits the Halloween vibe. Next up is Bendy and the Ink Machine. This game has a really cool look to it. And this is, uh, I mean, it's a family-friendly game, I guess. I mean, kids uh, uh, kids were the ones that started playing Bendy. And uh, the first time I checked it out, I was really expecting this to be a very friendly, scary game. And I was surprised by just how creepy this game can be. Into the Dead 2. This is a super fun game. This is basically a, an endless runner um, where each level, once your character starts at the beginning, you don't stop. All you can do is veer left or right to try to pick up loot boxes and ammo boxes. You're trying to shoot as many enemies, uh, zombies as you can. Um, you've got a, a bunch of different weapon types that you can get and each level will have, uh, like different things that you're supposed to do, like kill us, kill 50 enemies with pistols, uh, with eight hand grenade kills and six kills with your pet. You can also get different pets. Uh, this is a really fun game. I beat this one, uh, I think it was either earlier this year um, or last year, had a great time with this one. Zombieland Double Tap Road Trip. This is kind of an uh, overhead style, um, kind of like a Diablo style, uh, the way the game looks from above. Um, fun game. Definitely uh, deals with the zombies. Fits in with the Halloween vibe. Stubbs the Zombie, a rebel without a pulse. Uh, beat this game last year, and this is a super fun game. Definitely has some difficulty spikes. Uh, it's a little ridiculous, but you play as Stubbs the Zombie. This takes place in the 50s, and basically you are fighting the military uh, on your way through the game. Um, you're basically the only creepy aspect of the game, but this is a fun one and figured I would throw that in with the more family friendly. Next up is Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol. Two games in one. These are both original Super Nintendo games. And these are both family-friendly games where you are shooting ghouls and zombies and different creatures in that sweet 16 and 32-bit goodness that we all love. And then the last family-friendly-ish game I, I've got as, that I'm going to show would be Luigi's Mansion 3. I uh, do not have two uh, because I already have it for the 3DS, but uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, absolutely fantastic. Uh, people rave about it. I've yet to play this one. Uh, Leanne beat it uh, a couple years ago and absolutely loved it. Uh, but definitely a spooky game that you can play this Halloween season. And that's kind of it for the family-friendlier games, if you want to call them those. And we'll move on to some games that are a little bit creepier. First up is The Coma Recut. This is a cartoonish style, but it's more a Korean indie cult classic with all new visual upgrade and mechanics. And this is, a, I forget what this pertains to the story, but it's, it takes place in a school, which a lot of the uh, Asian horror games take place in schools for some reason. I've only got about an hour into this and then I got pulled into something else, but definitely check out the coma. Next up is World of Horror. This is a one bit graphic style game done in black and white. Uh, very, very unique game. And uh, definitely recommend this one. I have not played this one myself. I am um, excited to eventually dig into this, but the backlog is huge. Uh, but I've heard wonderful things about this game. It is definitely creepy and worth your time. So if you're into weird one-bit style graphic games, 
that will take you on a ride, check out World of Horror. We'll do another big box game. It's the last one I have. That's Layers of Fear Legacy. This is done by Blooper Team, who is doing the new Silent Hill 2 remake that comes out in like a week or two. And uh, not played this one yet either, uh, but I hear pretty good things about this one. Uh, this is kind of a walking simulator style horror game um, where you are kind of searching for clues. I can't remember the story of this as uh, I've got a lot of games and only so much memory. But uh, definitely check out Layers of Fear as there's honestly not a ton of horror games for the system anyway. I mean, there's a bunch, but... Next up is Call of Cthulhu. This is a game I beat last year or two years ago, can't remember. Uh, third person game, very, very fun. Uh, definitely recommend this one. This is um, HG Lovecraft and uh, great, great game. Had a lot of fun with this one. This is on a few systems, but if you want to play it on the go, switch copy. We've got Tormented Souls. This game plays a lot like uh, Resident Evil. It's got that locked camera and the tank control, uh, but this is a newer game and this is a really, really fun one. So if you're into games like Resident Evil, the old style games, uh, and you've not checked this one out, check out Tormented Souls. I believe there's a sequel to this one coming soon. If my mind is serving me I believe they're, they did a sequel, and it's coming out soon. Speaking of Resident Evil, we've got the Origins Collection. This includes two nightmares. Got Resident Evil Zero. And I think it's Resident Evil and Resident Evil Zero. But uh, one of the games is on the cartridge. The other one is a download code, unfortunately. But either way, you've got to have Resident Evil in your collection. These games are staples and uh, had to throw that one in there. Now we'll get into some more first person style. Up first, Alien Isolation, the collection. Again, this came out on multiple systems, but if you want to play it on the go, the Switch can do it, and it plays very, very well. This is one of the scariest games ever made. If you are a fan of Alien, uh, the movies, or any of the games, not that most of the games are any good, only a couple of them are, check out Alien Isolation. This game will scare the pants off of you. Next up is Dusk, and this is a boomer shooter done in the old school style graphics. It's just ridiculous fun. If you are into uh, games like Doom and Duke Nukem and Wolfenstein, the old school games, and you uh, want to check out something new done in that vein, check out Dusk. This game's great. Next up, Metro Redux. This is two games in one. This is Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light. Uh, I beat both of these games. I think it was earlier this year. These are both first-person games that take place in the subway tunnels underneath Russia and um, Germany. And uh, you're deal basically dealing with a lot of monsters, mutated creatures from nuclear fallout. But the stories in these games are great. The voice acting is great, and the gameplay is a bunch of fun. And these games are super dark. And when I say dark, I mean a lot of the game you're playing in the dark. Um, very fun games, though. Recommend any of the Metro games. Next up, Sharon's Staircase. This is a game I actually just started playing. Uh, only about an hour into it. Uh, so I don't know much about this one. I can't remember the story other than you are codenamed Desmond. And you are sent to this... Um, forget if it's a hospital, uh, to try and recover the truth of some horrifying events that happened there. Um, 
it, this is more of a walking simulator so far. Not bad. Uh, some people might not enjoy this game. So I can't say I'd recommend it, but if you're willing to try it, this game is not expensive. It's like 15 to 20 bucks for an open copy. And I say give it a shot. You might find something about it you enjoy, but either way, Sharon Staircase is a game that belongs in this month's library of games. Next up, Carrion. This game's cool because you get to be the bad guy and you get to devour and it is awesome. So you've got all of these tentacles that can shoot through these gaps and grab people, swing them around and you know slam them into the ground, throw them into things, pull them through, you can devour them. And this game is absolutely gory. It is beautiful. This game is pixelated fun. It is Devolver. What else can I say? If you want to be the bad guy, check this game out. It is fantastic. Signalis. This is a game that got very expensive very quick. Uh, this game's going for around $100 complete. And when I say complete, I mean it must have uh, this fake photograph and this other piece of paper behind it. Um, if you don't have this, it's not complete. But this game is a pixelated space horror game, and it is wonderful. It's beautiful. The gameplay is great. And there's a reason why this game is already going for $100, and it's not even a year old. It might be around a year old, but do yourselves a favor. If this sounds like something you could be interested in, check out Signalis sooner than later, or at least keep your eyes open for a copy that uh, goes on sale for a price you're, you know, that you're, you'd pay for it. Next up, In Sound Mind. It's a game I got for the Xbox as well, um, but this, you don't see uh, very many copies for the Switch. This is a first-person um, horror game, basically, where you are going through people's memories, journeying through their memories, uh, trying to escape each one of them. Um, but they're all in the mind, and it's basically like a survival horror, surreal survival horror experience with mind-bending puzzles. Uh, but if this game sounds interesting, uh, check it out. This game's also not expensive, but... One you don't see very often, and one that deserves to be talked about this month. Next up is Ikai, or Ikai, not exactly sure. And this is another first-person game. Um, I forget if this is uh, where exactly the um, backstory of this one takes place, but... Uh, an interesting game. Oh, Japanese spirits, monsters, and yokai. Okay, so um, very interesting gameplay. If This is one of those where if you know what to do, you can beat the game in less than an hour. Uh, but either way, this one of the interesting aspects of this one is having to actual draw out uh, the Japanese writing. Um, and then, yeah, got some interesting gameplay to it. Also has some stickers as well as a booklet so make sure you've got that but there's a kai next up monstrum this one takes place on a ship and basically you are trying to survive this monster there are i think there are three different monsters it's always random every time you die you start over the monster can be uh, it's randomly chosen to be one of the three different monsters each time. And you have to... Um, each monster requires different techniques to get by and try to escape. Um, it's basically just you against the monster on this ship. And this is a pretty interesting game. Um, one that not very many people talk about. Uh, but check out Monstrum. Next up we've got a pair... And that is, or I should say trio, that is Yamawari Lost in the Dark and the Yamawari Long Night Collection. So this one is Lost in the Dark and this one is Yamawari Night Alone and Yamawari Midnight Shadows. So 
This is two Yamawari games, and this is one. And these are basically kind of like top down. They're really cutesy looking, but again, don't let that fool you. These games have some scary elements to them, um, and they definitely have some creepy vibes. This is very Japanese, but uh, they, they are beautiful games, and the stories are great. Uh, and these games are also not very cheap. So if this sounds like something you could be interested in, I would keep an eye on these now. Next up's another one that's pricey, and that is Darkwood. This is a super rare game. And this one also comes with some stuff as well if you want it to be complete. This is a very unique game. It is beautiful as well, very dark. So you start, it's an all above view, so it's a top down. And you basically start off with this fortress. Well, it's not a fortress, it's a house, but it, you have to make it a fortress basically. Um, so you have to go out into the woods and scavenge to find pieces to come back. You have to board up the place that you're staying. You have to try to survive the night, which is when the monsters really come out to get you. And then each day you have to try to venture further away uh, and try to find new places to hunker down until you can eventually find yourself out of the dark woods. Um, and as you progress, this game gets harder. New creatures open up. This game is fantastic, uh, but like I said, not cheap already, so check this game out sooner than later. Up next is another game that's already expensive, and that is Stranger Things The Game 3, and this one was delisted. Basically, this game follows the exact plot of Stranger Things Season 3, which is why this is Stranger Things The Game 3. So if you're a fan of the Stranger Things, the show, uh, do yourselves a favor and check this game out. It also comes with some stuff as well, so make sure you've got all of that if you want it to be complete. Um, but this is, um, you know, it's a fun game. Uh, it, I've played it. It's not great, but if you're a fan of the show, you'll definitely enjoy it. Otherwise, if you're not, um, it's a little pricey. I don't know if I would pay for it if you weren't a fan of the show. Next up is a game I am a fan of, and that is Bramble the Mountain King. This is a game I just beat uh, about five weeks ago, and this is based on some folklore as well. I forget, uh, I forget what country it's like Norway, Norwegian folktale or something like that. But you are Ollie, a boy who sets off to re to rescue his sister. Who gets taken by Bramble the Mountain King. Uh, very, pu uh, very pretty game. Uh, the graphics are definitely beautiful. This is kind of an above ground third person-ish style game. Um, it kind of changes perspective throughout the game, but uh, very creepy portions of this game um, and definitely recommend it. Not a long game, but uh, man, this is a game that will stick with you for a little bit after you finish it, that's for sure. Next up is White Knight. And this is another unique game where everything is black and white except for certain elements of the game. So as you strike a match, that'll have the glow of a match light. Certain lights will have a certain glow to them. Other than that, everything is black and white. You are a detective that wrecks his car. You go to this house to use the phone. After you enter this house, strange things start to happen. Um, that's all I'm going to say. Definitely very, very pretty game. This has fixed cam reviews, a lot like uh, the old school Resident Evil game, so keep that in mind. But if this game looks or sounds interesting, Go check out some more gameplay. I would encourage if you, if any of these games look or sound interesting, don't buy them based off of what I say. Do a little bit more research and make sure that it's a game that you would totally be interested in 
before you go out and spend your hard-earned money. Uh, but this is a very comic book style game. Also reminds me of the Sin City movies a little bit, but White Knight is very unique. Check that game out if you are interested. All right, I lied. I do have one more big box game. That is Dread Out 2. Not any pictures to show you on this one, but this is a game much like, um, what am I thinking of here? Uh, Fatal Frame. Instead of using a camera, you are using your phone. So basically the same thing, just, uh, you know, modern day camera. Um, and you are fighting spirits with your phone. Basically, this is a modern day, you know, Fatal Frame style game. So if you're into the Fatal Frame games, check out Dread Out 2. This game's pretty cool. Um, it, this does have some other unique elements as well, but nobody really brings up this game. So check that one out. And then speaking of the Fatal Frame games, the rest of these are basically that style. And we will start with Madison. This is another game that's starting to get pricey already as well. This is one where you find a camera obscura in this house that you are in. You then have to use it to finish the game. So it's an immersive, terrifying first-person psychological horror game with disturbing gameplay and unsettling narrative. Check out Madison. Then we've got Fatal Frame Maidens of Blackwater and Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. Again, these ones you're using your camera camera obscura to basically fight and ward off these spirits and work your way through the story. Fatal Frame games are fantastic. Uh, they've been staple horror games for decades now and you should not pass these up if you are fans of the original Fatal Frames. Definitely give these games a look here. And then the last game I'm going to show, guys, or should I say games, are the scariest games I've ever played so far. And that is Outlast Bundle of Terror and Outlast 2. This is the big box double from Limited Run. Very expensive box set. And basically you get Outlast Bundle of Terror, which is Outlast 1 and its DLC, The Whistleblower. And then Outlast 2, which this one is still sealed. I have the Outlast Trilogy for my uh, Xbox One. So I'm able to play it there. But uh, these games are first person, no weapons, run and hide games where you basically, um, it is dark, man. All you have is a camera when it's, uh, you have to find batteries for the camera and you're using your night vision to be able to see. And like I said, you can't fight or defend yourself. When somebody spots you, you have to run and hide or run and get away. These games are seriously intense and just creepy and scary. If, uh, if you think you've got the cojones, check out the Outlast Bundle of Terror and Outlast 2 games. These are the scariest, legit the scariest games I've played so far. So those are my recommendations for Halloween, guys. Um, if you guys want to play something that's going to put a little fear in you and make you feel alive. Here's a good selection. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have some fingernails left. And if you do enjoy this video, I hope you hit that red button if you're not yet a subscriber. And if you enjoy my content and you'd like to check out a little bit more, you can go to my Instagram. That is Steve Craig Retro Games. Same as it is down below. And of course, I'm dropping videos every single week, always on Friday. And when I can, I'll drop a second one sometime the first half of the week. Um, next week, I will be dropping at least one video on Friday, like I said. 
Don't know yet if I'll have the time to drop one in the first half of the week, but come back next week and we'll all find out together. But um, until then, guys, please leave me some comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on any of the scary games I showed and discussed. I would love if you would uh, recommend any to me that you did not see me show you guys uh, so that I can go out and maybe add that to the collection as well. And of course, as always, leave me a like and uh, spread this video to your friends, guys. And um, I hope you guys enjoy the month of spooky gaming. So until next week, have an absolutely fantastic weekend. Thank you guys so much for watching and keep gaming.